Senpai, it looks like you're next. We have Mr. Puppet calling out Senpai. It says, throughout the entire summer of 2016, I had a sexual relationship with Senpai. Cinnamon, as she was known as during that time, says she was 24 and I was only 14. My experience, I was manipulated, used, and sexualized. My entire life, I loved competing in Smash. And when I was 14, that was pretty much all I did. I could only travel to big tournaments during the summer since they were on weekends and I had school. Since I was only 14, I couldn't drive or anything. I would end up carpooling up to these tournaments. My friends and I would do it on a weekly basis and would travel up to the, travel up to the further away weeklies on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. That's a lot. First, you said it was only you said it was only during the weekends because you had school. And then it was also Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays where you would travel for the weeklies further away for the further away weeklies. So cinema and I were really good friends with each other over the time from traveling to locals together so much. We would end up liking each other a lot. This is sometime before the summer of 2016. Cinnamon initiated sexual conversations on Snapchat with me, and I would respond, but I never truly knew if anything could come of it, right? So we have someone initiating sexual conversations and it being received willingly. So Cinnamon and I would DM on Facebook and Snapchat, since her accounts are both not deleted currently and have been for a while on a daily basis the first sexual thing that happened between the two of us happened one night after we got back from one of the tournaments we traveled up to after the tourney we went back to the place where we were staying at and once we got there we started playing smash and then a mario party after his people started drinking once we got back which happened regularly right regularly Regular drinking among young males, young females, probably some underage drinking. But of course, he is the sweet little angel. He says, but I would never drink myself. No way. I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy, mommy. I would never do that. So something crazy ended up happening in the game we were playing. And since, and since I was a hyper kid... I ran into the hallways towards the bathroom away from the main room. And we were all playing in like a joke pop off. It says cinnamon who was pretty drunk. Cinnamon who was pretty drunk at the time, then ran after me and tackled me to the ground and started to make out with me while laying on top of me. So my question is always the same, right? You're a young 14 year old man or young 14 year old boy, however you want to look at it. Where are your parents, right? I mean, why would your parents let you go away for the entire summer, every weekend, and also on Tuesdays, and also on Wednesdays, and also on Thursdays, to these things that were going on, right? Underage drinking, promiscuous sexual activity. And of course, uh, as a young man, I'm sure his parents, or maybe his parents, I'm not sure if he comes from a single household, probably went over this stuff with him about do's and don'ts of being a young man. Don't interact with young women. Uh, you know, avoid at sex. Don't get anybody pregnant. Don't ruin your life. No underage drinking. Don't hang out with people that do all these things. And yet here he was in a bad situation as a young man, as he says, inexperienced and something bad happened. Right? So it's important to understand the scenario that this individual finds himself in. I know he wants to paint himself as it's not my responsibility, which he goes into. He says in the very beginning, I I was manipulated, me. I was manipulated. I was used. I was sexualized, right? And so this goes both ways, whether it's for females or for males. People often tend to find themselves in really bad situations and lo and behold, bad shit happens. He says, then he ran after, tackled me to the ground, and started to make out with me while laying on top of me. He said, that incident probably happened 
for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then after we just got back, we kept and kept playing. I was, I pretty much, I was pretty much just in shock the entire time it was happening. I wasn't really a poet. I highly doubt that this man was in shock. He was probably surprised that an older woman was interested in him. Shock? No, he was like, shit, can we do it again? Can we do it again? So I really wasn't opposed to it though, right? So he was a young man. He knew what was going on and he was in no way, shape or form opposed to it. And this is often what happens where either older men get involved with younger women, younger, younger men get involved with older women. You find an older guy with a younger girl. There's no, uh, there's typically, there's no opposition, right? You get like a young guy who's like 16. He's involved with an 18 year old girl. They've been boyfriend and girlfriend since they were 15 and 17. And now he's 18. And then now you're, now you're a, you're a, you're a rapist, right? Right. Because you're depending upon the state, you can be found guilty of a statutory rape. And of course, this is, this is an older woman, according to the story. Again, if there was proof I mean, we'll read into it that there were, a lot of people would know about this again, because this was something that happened throughout the whole summer, right? June, July, August, maybe even into September. So depending upon how long these summer 20s went, and again, they carpooled, this young man couldn't drive, right? So he went up with a bunch of his other buddies. No doubt they stayed in some sort of a hotel or something. So when you're around groups of people like that, no doubt. A lot of people would know about this, right? Especially if you're a young man. I mean, especially if you're a, uh, even if you're a young man or a young boy, t- they tend they typically tend to act in an immature way, right? I'd be like, "Oh, what were you doing? I saw you were hanging out with that. What's going on? What's going on? Right? What's going on? Tell me. Come here. You, you smashing that? You smash? Come on, I want to know." That happens a lot with young men. The moment they see other young men giving undue attention to a woman, especially as a young guy, they're like, "What's going on?" Right? What's going on? Especially even if you're a female, they'd be like, they'll see you talking to someone and your young female friends and you'd be like, oh, what are you, well, you were talking, what's his name? What's going on there? Right? Isn't he a little young? What's going on? Keep, I'm going to keep an eye on you. And of course, the moment your friends start to notice something, well, what do they do? All the more, they pay more attention. So if this actually was going on, this entire group would probably be aware of what was going on as he later talks about that they spent every night together that they were out in the same bed. And you're telling me that no one saw this of the, the entire group that was there. No one bothered to say anything. And of course, there was also underage drinking that was going on. He says, I wasn't really opposed to it, though. He says, I was 14 and I liked her a lot. He says, we spent basically every week together during that summer. Right. So that on top of the sexual things that we would do made me start to develop strong feelings towards it. Of course, it's, if it's the first woman that you're with, a lot of these young men end up catching feelings. He says that was a min- that was one of the many times I had a sexual experience with her, right? So this wasn't a one-time thing where I screwed up. This was a bad idea. Um, you're older than me. We shouldn't be doing this. It was like no. He was like Shh, all in, headlong, right? We headlong. We're going deep. No pun intended. And he says, but I'm not going into details about every single time, since some of them are a blur in my mind. And I only remember probably three or four times vividly. It says we would usually sleep together most nights after the first incident, right? So no one saw this. No one saw Senpai, who would have been probably with the girls and the guys would have been with the guys. None of the females, none of the males saw this or didn't say anything at all and just allowed it, right? And so it says three or four times, it says our sexual relationship escalated as far as oral sex, but never, but never as far as sexual intercourse. It says our pseudo relationship lasted pretty much the entire summer. And she played with my head so often during that time. It's still, it's, it's, it is still really fuck with me uh, to this day. It says I truly believe most of my mental issues stem from that summer and how she treated me. I'm not going to get into mental issues. This is, she would tell me things like we can get together when you're at 18. She would make me periodically delete our Facebook messages and would constantly remind me that I couldn't tell anyone, even though that was obvious to me, even though that was obvious to me, right? It was obvious to me that she could, that he couldn't tell anybody. He could have, if he thought that what he was doing was wrong, he could have said to his parents, right? Cause I'm sure his parents would not have approved of him doing this. That's not why they sent him there. They sent him to these tournaments 
because he wanted to play the game. He wanted to get better. This was this this was his thing. And so they said, okay, we're going to send you there. But obviously, I'm sure they told him, don't do dumb shit, right? And instead, he did dumb shit. And he got himself in a bad situation. Again, I don't know whether these allegations are true or not. But it doesn't alleviate his personal responsibility for his actions. He said in the very beginning that this initiated with her being drunk, right? He saw that there was a lot of drinking going on and he could have remembered, you know, my parents told me to watch out for these things. And instead he chose to ignore them. And then I'm sure his parents told him to be careful with young women, right? Don't get yourself into trouble. Don't ask, don't get somebody pregnant. Young men typically don't know how to make good choices. So parents ingrain these things into their head. And they keep telling them over and over and over again for these things not to happen, to watch out for these things. And of course, so these are some of the things, the warning signs. These were many warning signs that were going on. And then, of course, the drinking. No adult supervision, right? There was no adult supervision here. And so he finds himself in a bad situation where he doesn't have the mental fortitude to get himself out of a bad situation. A situation that he says he approved of. Right? In his own words, he says that he approved of what was going on, despite being raised to the contrary, despite knowing that what was going on was, in essence, illegal. So whether it's a man or a female that this happens to, it's important to understand that it in no way, shape, or form alleviates, at the very least, his side of what was going on, that he was responsible for his actions and that his actions have consequences, just like her actions. If this is real... She was, complete, she was completely in the wrong. She's an adult. She should have made better decisions. But at the very beginning, which often happens when alcohol is introduced into a situation where there's young men, there's young women, there's high levels of testosterone. A lot of people don't know how to control their emotions. And a young girl gets drunk and surprise, surprise, she ends up doing something that she shouldn't have. And it says, having to, having to see her after this period... Oh, excuse me. She says she would constantly gaslight me and, and, uh, and make me question myself all the time while I was only 14 and still trying to find myself as a person. Does not being able to tell anyone about my experience ate away at me constantly, right? So if his conscience bothered him, well, then you make the conscientious choice to come forward, right? Your parents love and care about you. They're the ones who are providing for you. They're the ones who are teaching you and training you and preparing you for adulthood. Why would you trust this person more than the people that actually love and care about you? And this is very important. If you find yourself in a situation like this, it's very important to think about these things. Think about the scenario that you're finding yourself in and think, should I be here? Should I leave and make the choice to walk away? And if you find yourself that you have had yourself placed in a position like this, then keep in mind that your friends and your family are the ones that care about you the most and they want the best for you. And don't take the side of staying quiet because that is what will often lead uh, to as what he refers to previously of him having some sort of mental issues. He says, I would have to play, I would have to play her in doubles. He says, having to, having to see her after, um, oh, she says, not being able to tell only one about the experience. He says, having to see her after this period hurt me a lot. This is what constantly distract me at tournaments. I would, I would have to play her in doubles on a weekly basis, pretty much, and she would be teaming with her boyfriend during those times. That would especially hurt me. I was super bitter about, about the whole thing and would BM every set in doubles. I played versus hers, as you can still see this on YouTube um, from four, four weeklies. I never knew how to process these emotions at the time. I honestly still struggle to try and understand them to this day. He says, I could write about these things for countless hours experience during the summer, but that would make it insanely long. This is my reason for writing this is so that I can hopefully be at peace with my experience finally. And whenever I read one of these things, whenever you see a person talk about these sort of experiences, I would say, great. Did you go to the police? Did you go to the professionals who are responsible for ensuring your safety? Did you seek mental help? Right? Because part of that, part of going to the police 
you then get a psyche valve, right? To see what your mental state was or to see what your mental state is. You can go to a hospital and speak to a doctor or a nurse to get some mental health. And that would be my question, right? If, if someone, because this gets posted on social media, right? It gets posted on social media. I and mean, this has been happening for a long time where it's real easy to post things on social media, create a story and to damage someone's reputation. And so my question, that would be my very first question. I'd be like, great. I appreciate you coming forward. Did you go to the police? If the answer is no, then I would say, well, great. Why don't you? go to the police. And it's because it's against the law to falsely accuse somebody, right? So a lot of these experiences on social media, again, whether this individual's story is true or not, if there was truth to it, then the individual could just post uh, post facts, right? I mean, like I said, this was happening in a group setting. It wasn't like he was alone. He had his own car. He was picking her up, etc. This was happening in a group setting. So somebody would have seen it. Someone could corroborate and say, yes, such and such. They were hanging out all the time. She would stay in his bed, right? Easy, it could easily be corroborated by the groups of people that he was with because somebody out of the group of people that were with had to see it. And if that is the case, then my question still remains, why didn't you go to the police? Why aren't you now going to the police with with the story so that they can investigate. That's the whole point of making these crimes illegal. It would literally be like saying, you know, infamous came into my store and he robbed me two years ago, right? Two years ago, he, he, he stole something from the store that I worked at. You know, it was a traumatizing experience to, to have this individual bully me. And I thought I was going to be assaulted and he stole X, Y, and Z and you post it on social media. I would ask the very same question. Great, appreciate you posting this. Have you gone to the police? It doesn't matter what the crime is, right? This is just an easier crime that's much harder to prove, right? It's just a, hard, it's just a crime that's much harder to prove. And my question will always be the same thing. If a crime is committed, then why haven't you gone to the authorities? It's a question, it's a question that you, it's the very first thing when someone says, when there's some sort of a crime that's been committed, the very first thing that you should ask is, great, did you call the police? Did you file a police report so that an, invest an investigation can be underway? So that the police will know that this individual um, perhaps is guilty of committing some sort of crime and they need to look into it, right? So that other people will know. Not posting it on social media where then you get 30 plus thousand likes and 8,000 retweets. And there's been no investigation whatsoever, right? So you can ruin someone, someone's life. This happens both ways. It, happen, it, happens to, it happens a lot to men, but it can also happen to women. And this is the age of social media. This is what people do. Back in the days when racism was rampant, like I spoke about in my previous video of what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, individuals lost their lives. Many individuals lost their lives. And you never know how someone is going to react right you never know how people are going to react towards other individuals so when you make claims like this you could actually be putting someone's life at risk it happened in Tulsa Oklahoma it's happened throughout history where someone accuses someone of rape this happened even in biblical times right the D Dinah for those who are who, for those who know and remember the Bible Dinah was also uh, accused, accused someone of rape. She actually was raped. And as a result, her brothers went down to where this individual lived and killed many of the men who knew the person that raped Dinah. And this is, a, this is often the reaction of most men. The reaction of most men is to want to become violent when they hear someone, especially someone that they care about, becomes sexually assaulted. The result is that you end up causing rage to inflame in the heart of an individual and if you are doing these things under a false pretense if you're falsely accusing someone whether you're a man accusing a woman or whether you're a woman accusing a man and that person goes out and kills someone that blood comes onto your hands and that's i, I would not recommend anybody be in the practice of doing this 
if a crime has been committed, regardless of what the crime has committed, whether it's sexual assault, whether it's physical assault, whether someone is threatening you, whether someone has robbed and mugged you, to go to the police, to go to the professionals who are responsible for ensuring your safety so that these individuals can be brought to justice, not social justice.